Hello, this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. I'm just going to wing it on this video with very little notes or anything like that. This is just a, a video that shows where the actual crime scene is in the Madeline Soto case. There have been news articles out there that said the crime scene was one to two miles away from the road. And I don't know if that was because they were trying to get people to, uh, you know, not look in the area where the crime scene actually is. But it's really only, you know, yards off of the road that apparently Stephen Stern's vehicle had a flat tire. So let's take a look at this. There was a helicopter flying around out there that was taking footage of the presence of law enforcement and it was flying all over the place but at one point it captured two individuals looking inside of some roadside uh, hedges for lack of a better term and I have the crime scene photo which isn't really it's not graphic whatsoever but I still blurred out the you know, you could maybe see some jeans and perhaps uh, the green jacket uh, in various spots underneath the sort of, um, I guess, grass. It looks like the person intentionally covered her body with grass, okay? So let's just take a look at this right now. And this is the helicopter flying around. And you can see there's the road back there where the law enforcement was parked. And right here is the crime scene tape, that little yellow that you see right there. And let me show you where that is on a map. It's, it's looking just like this. Okay, the crime scene tape is right here. If we go down to Street View, you'll recognize this from uh, other shots that you've seen in the media. And I believe that the body of Madeline Soto was found right in this gap right there. Okay, now this is a year or so ago, and these are somewhat newer, and they're a lot thicker now. But uh, you, as you can see, there's an opening there, and it gets wider as it goes up. So down below, they're a little bit tighter in there. So if you go up in the air, that would be right here. All right, so let's get back to the video and see how they're standing right there. There's the hedges, and they're standing right there. Now you can start seeing there's a, something blue right in this area right there. And though that is the jeans or something that looks like jeans in association with Madeline Soto. So it's actually on this helicopter footage. And you can see right there, even this portion is over here and then that is right there, exactly the same shape. It's right in that spot and these two guys are looking See right there again. You can definitely see an item back there, and they're looking back there, and they're wearing masks. They are really observing here. I think uh, there's the light that they set up on the street is right out there, so I think this is the area of the crime scene. I mean, it's always possible that I'm wrong here, but I don't think so. And let me, let's go back a little bit and look at the when the image is up there. Now, you see how this looks like almost like bamboo right here and how there's an opening. And that's the opening that I believe you can see when you go to Street View. Let's take a look at that again. Go down right here and zoom in and see how that's kind of like that same bamboo looking material and you can see through and this is the grass that you can see on the other side of that that image uh, so if we were just to put that on the screen right here you can see through and the street would be forward that photograph that was taken was on the same side that you see these two officials standing on so it's going to be right in there and let's play that and see how you can see there's it's an opening that goes through right there. And uh, the photograph was taken basically where this guy in dark is standing. And 
and I'm just playing it in slow motion here. I changed the brightness and contrast so you can see things a little bit better. And you can see right there, they both have masks on, so they're obviously not trying to contaminate the area with DNA. And notice how they're looking at the ground for any items or trying to make sure they don't stand on any footprints, things like that, because they know this is the crime scene area. And now I'm just playing it again without any graphics put on top of it. Uh, here they are again, the two law enforcement officers. And you can even see in that shot right there, the blueness there comes in and out of focus. There's a mound back there that her body was covered with straw. Or, you know, some of the wild grasses there just piled on top. But not really well because you could still see her through it. And it's, it, it's interesting, too, because it just seems like they're blocking off the entire area. I saw shots earlier in the video in the helicopter surveillance where ATVs show up. And I don't know if they found this location before or after that. Maybe they're using the ATV just to look around to see if there's any other items. But this really does appear to be where she was found because it matches that crime scene photograph that the sheriff put out there uh, absolutely perfectly. Same foliage, same opening, same color, same sort of uh, comparison in the image of where different colored objects are. And I think it really is where the crime scene is. And if we were going to go back out to... Let's just go up here and measure it. So from the road, and we'll go by it with feet, it is only 60 feet from the road, which is about 20 yards. All right. Now, we also know that Stephen Stearns, when he was seen out here, had a flat tire and now some people think that he was faking to have a flat tire so that he could put the body somewhere but to me it almost seems like he really did have a flat tire and that's why he put her body so close because he wasn't able to get any further and he didn't want somebody to stop by and see if he needed some help and have her body sitting in the car. So he moves it and puts it right over here and perhaps he was going to go back out at another time and move her body because this is an absolutely ludicrous place to store a body right here on the side of the road. It, it doesn't make any sense. So it seems like he really did get a flat tire and then he moved her body into this uh, hedges right here. Okay. So I think that's it. I originally, I thought maybe her body was found in this area, but I also had this spot marked off by saying two people looked in the hedges here. And it wasn't until I got the crime scene photograph that I realized it was this original spot right here. A lot of people think it was over in these woods over here because there was law enforcement moving around in various areas. Uh, but I believe it's right here. This is the crime scene. So this portion here is just going to be the video without me talking.
So I hope you found the video interesting. Uh, and maybe you could theorize in the comments about the parking and did he really have a flat tire or did he fake having a flat tire just so that people wouldn't question a trunk being open and he just put her body that close anyways. But having a flat tire, you would want to remove a body from your vehicle as fast as possible so that anybody coming by that wants to help, a police officer or a local, they wouldn't see the body in his vehicle. Okay? So I hope you guys found this video interesting and give you a little further context. I think it's accurate. But you never know until the actual information comes out. But if that crime scene photo is accurate, then that is the spot in my opinion. Okay, thank you all very much for watching. If you could leave a comment in the comment section, make sure to hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and then select all videos. Okay, thank you very much for watching. And as I always say, everybody, until next time, be safe out there.